Can the stock market continue to go higher and higher and higher forever? While people on the internet believe that the market is overvalued, that the S&P 500 is due for a pullback, we have seen nothing but higher highs and higher highs for the past few days and weeks and months, it feels like. Like the market has never pulled back. And well, here we are. We're going to take a look at the charts. We're going to talk about what Jamie Dimon, the CEO of Goldman Sachs, the largest, pretty much like one of the largest banks and investment firms in the world, what he said the other day, thinking that this economic boom can extend to 2023. We're going to talk about it right here in this video. So make sure you stay tuned. <laughs> Market. We're talking the S&P 500. We're also talking about Jamie Dimon, our old friend, Jamie Dimon. You got to love Jamie Dimon. So just the other day, Jamie Dimon, uh, this is April 7th on Wednesday, he said that the economic boom fueled by deficit spending vaccines could easily run into 2023. That was in his annual shareholder letter saying that he sees strong growth for the world's biggest economy in the near term. He did say that he believes that the stock market valuations are quite high, but that's pricing in a multi-year boom. So basically, you know, when you buy a stock, you're buying a stock on the idea of future value earnings, things like that in the, you know, in the future. So basically the stock market is pricing in this idea that the economy is going to continue to boom and boom until 2023. And, well, it's funny because a lot of people on the internet always, I've been seeing this since 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. Well, 2020, the, the Bears finally won a little bit there. But overall, it's still like it just, it doesn't make any sense at this point. The market will just continue to do what it's going to do. And it's funny because there's always going to be people that are saying like, hey, the market's overvalued. This stock's overvalued. Blah, blah. There's always a bear, you know, in the room. And the thing is, if I like today reading on stock twits, going through stock twits and seeing what everyone's talking about, it's so funny because everybody's like, just, oh my gosh, the world's going to end. You know, the stock market's going to crash. Like it's so high. It can't keep going higher and higher forever. Like at some point my puts are finally going to print. Well, it, it, it didn't. You can see here looking at the daily chart on the spy right now up to a high today. I think the high was like all the way up here at 411 on the spy. If you would have told me back, you know, in the beginning of 2020 when the market was crashing, the world was ending, that the spy, the S&P 500 would be $411 today, I would have laughed. And you probably would have laughed as well. But you can see the high today, 411. Look at this move, which is amazing. Look how insane this move was. We got a move from the 409 area. This is what about I think like 315. And by the end of market close, or right at basically market close, we hit 411. That's a huge move just out of nowhere. And that five-minute chart, that's a five-minute chart, by the way. Resistance there at the 410 area for a hot minute. And I'm thinking like, okay, we're going to finally break through that 410 area, right? We pulled back, and then it was just, boom, off to the races. And it's funny because it really, like, there was no, you know, clear reason to why it bounced at where it did. I mean, if you wanted to, like, really be like, oh, this is, this is why it happened, you could maybe put you know, that trend line there on the top of that resistance being that 409.50 area. So getting stuck there at 410, pulling back to the 409.50 area, and then kind of retesting that previous resistance there. You can see the volume for most of the day was pretty low. And then here at the end of the day, it just ramped up and went to the moon. And it's funny because, like I said, for as long as I can remember, people have always been bearish. There's always been like this very large group of people thinking that the market just can't keep going higher and higher. And it's interesting because I think a lot of that comes down to really traders in general. Traders look at this like, you know, the spy can't just keep going higher. Where like a retail investor, like let's say your mom, your dad, or your uncle, your sister or whatever, you know, someone just buying stocks on Robinhood. When they look at the spy, they're like, oh, it's just going higher and higher. It's amazing. Oh, it's so great. You know, I'm getting rich like over a week ago pulled back to the 385 area and then up to 410 now it's literally just been green 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 to 410 and you can see how far you know at this point we're off the moving averages it's the 50 day moving average and the spy here on the daily chart you know normally does have these little like moves up to pull back to the 50 day moving average area and then kind of you know start the next wave the next leg higher 
and it's just been madness. We broke above that 400 level, and it's just been off to the races. You can see, you know, normally the SPY kind of moves a few dollars a day, just, you know, like up, down, kind of pull back, little up, downs, stuff like that. Like, you know, normally little moves. But for the last week, two weeks, or whatever you want to call it, yeah, two weeks or so, it's just been on a tear because I believe that everyone is just so bearish and everyone thinks the market just can't keep going higher. And well, guess what? It just keeps going higher. We're getting an all time high move. The volume is decreasing, which is kind of funny because we're breaking through all time highs continuously. All time highs, you know, look, literally all time high, all time high, all time high was all time high, all time high. We're literally making all time highs every single day. And the volume is not really reflecting that type of action. It's just been very, very low volume. And I saw the other day, I think they said that the volume trading activity volume was down like 40, 50%. What does that really mean at the end of the day here? Does that mean that the SPY is finally going to top out here at the 411 area? Or is it, you know, is it finally going to get the pullback? If everybody is bearish, if everyone thinks that the SPY can't keep going higher and higher, well then guess what? The SPY will continue to go higher and higher because everybody is bearish and everyone's buying puts and everyone's shorting and everyone's just, oh, it can't go higher. And then you got the people who are FOMOing in as well, which is kind of funny because everybody who didn't want to buy here at the 400 area, thinking that this was like the top at the 397, 400 area. Well, now they're thinking like, did I miss out? Did I, should I buy in now? Is this the time to buy in? Is the FOMO real? And that FOMO definitely fuels these types of moves. And people, at the end of the day, it doesn't really come down to fundamentals. It really doesn't come down to, you know, really any logical reason other than just human interaction. And I did read a piece talking about the S&P 500 actually being undervalued where it's at right now, which is kind of funny because I guess if you look a lot at a lot of like the financials, some of like the software companies and things like that, their margins have increased a ton. And also, um, they've been able to increase their margins, increase their revenue, and decrease their costs, which is their margins. But you know what I mean? So there's this idea that really there's a lot of these tech companies, these software tech companies, things like that, that are actually undervalued, which is kind of mind blowing to think that a company, you know, that these companies could be undervalued at this point when we're at all time highs and being a trader, you know, if I'm a trader, it's hard to look at this and be like, do I really want to be buying at the 410 area, you know, for a long term hold here. But the problem is it just keeps going higher and higher. You know, you could have said the same thing when it broke through 400. You could have been like, well, you know, it's going to pull back. It goes to 406. Like, well, it's going to pull back. It goes, you know, 407. It's going to pull back. 408. It's going to pull back. 410. It's going to pull back. So very interesting to think about the human interaction here, the emotion of it. So Jamie Dimon is bullish on the fact that people have saved up money, that companies have actually cut their margins as well because people are working from home, which is kind of funny to think about because people are spending less money traveling to work every day. People are spending less money on work clothes. They have more money just to spend on fun things on technology, I guess. And it's interesting too, because for the last year, it seems like a lot of people really have just kind of saved up a lot of money because they've just kind of put money away because they haven't been spending money. They haven't been traveling. They haven't been buying things other than fishing poles and things like that. Cause everything's back ordered and I can't even buy a fishing pole right now. But in general, it's, interesting to really kind of look at what is going on. It was like 2020 was the year where more people save money than ever before. And now it's like, let's time to party. It's time to start spending that money again. And the more and more vaccines that are, that are getting introduced and people are getting vaccinated, people are less afraid to travel. We talked about this the other day with like the, with the cruise ships and things like that. So are we at a point that the market can continue continue to go higher from here? That's really the big question that we have to ask ourselves. But as a trader, you know, it's like it's hard to justify wanting to buy here at the 410 area. We know we're due for a pullback here, right? But the problem is, you know, maybe Monday, Tuesday, we go to 420. It's very possible here that this continues to just squeeze higher as everybody is bearish. And we've seen this with stocks before. You know, the S&P 500 is just pretty much a basket of stocks. So if everybody is bearish on these stocks and people are creating bigger and bigger short squeezes, well, then we could really just continue to have this huge melt up. And it's really, like I said, interesting that the volume, you know, through this move, breaking to all time highs multiple times here, the volume has been very low. So 
it'll be interesting to see what happens next week. I think we're going to be at a very turn, you know, very interesting point for a for a reversal here. There's got to be some type of kind of bad news or something has got to happen to really kind of trigger a big sell off here. And other than just technicals, I think you know you can't just look at a chart and be like, well, it's time to pull back. It's just not that simple, especially for the overall market here. You know, you can't just say, oh, the time is now. You know, it's finally the RSI is at a certain level. The we're far away from the EMAs, things like that. You just can't look at a chart and say it's time for the entire market to pull back. It really comes down to asking yourself, you know, what is really going on with the underlying issues here? Is the government continuing to print more and more money into the market as, you know, all these corporations making more and more money than ever before? There's so many questions. There's so little time. So here we are, the SPY. Is it going to go higher? Let me know in the comments below how high can it go? Or do you think that next week will be a massive sell-off? We will find out, obviously, Monday morning. I'll see you there. If you guys haven't already, do me one big favor. Hit that like button, subscribe button, all the buttons down below.